made this video to show how I built this fireplace. When people come over, they're always curious about how it works, how it was made, what makes it so special. So I'll show the step-by-step -step details of the construction. It began with a foundation. I poured some footings and laid up block walls to make a 4 foot by 8 foot rectangular box. The center of this box would be the ash dump. You can see the fireplace foundation in the center of the house foundation in this picture. The house foundation there is for a crawl space. The next steps didn't happen until the house was framed up and enclosed. The next step was to pour a reinforced concrete slab to cap the foundation. I placed some angle irons across and laid sheets of corrugated metal on top to hold the concrete while it hardened. I allowed for a fresh air intake and an ash dump where the firebox would be. Then I tied up the rebar and poured the concrete. In the bottom of the foundation, I put an ash clean out door so that sometime in the future I would be able to clean out the ashes. I'll go down in the crawl space now to show that. This is down in the crawl space. There's the ash clean out foundation of the fireplace. And I do have some hot water radiant floor heating as a source of heat too. Over here that's the fresh air intake and where it comes from the outside over there. Back up on top, I built a brick wall for the back of the fireplace. A bathroom would be on the other side. On the one end is a cabinet, so I built a six inch block wall there and left it hollow and put a one inch thick ceramic fiber board to insulate it. I didn't want heat going in that direction. On top of the concrete slab where the core of the fireplace would go, I poured a one inch thick slab of refractory cement for the bottom of the fireplace. And I separated from the concrete with a layer of ceramic fiber paper. I wanted to allow for heat expansion. Then I started building up the core of the fireplace with fire brick. The brick wall in the back of the fireplace was solid, and I knew heat would conduct that way, but I wanted to regulate it. So I placed in between half inch ceramic fiber blanket for some insulation. All this ceramic fiber material is high temperature insulation. Part of the opposite side of the brick wall is going to be a closet. I didn't want heat to go that direction. So I just left a two and a half inch air space so you get some air circulation through there. The fire brick would be used as a high temperature thermal mass. And in this picture you can see how the smoke channels run along the bottom. Then I continued building the fire brick core. I poured the subfloor of the firebox with inch and a half refractory cement and continued insulating as I built higher. To the left of the firebox is where the riser tube would go, and to the right, more smoke channels. The firebox was first lined with one inch thick ceramic fiber board, then loose replaceable fire brick were placed around the walls and the floor of the firebox in case they were broken later from use. The passage to the riser tube and the riser tube itself is made with one inch ceramic fiber board. The piping that you see in this picture was to be a secondary air burn for the riser area. I found out later after the using the fireplace that this pipe wasn't really necessary. The roof of the firebox I insulated with two inch ceramic fiber board and that is the trick of a hot clean burn. A well insulated firebox with plenty of air then I added the chimney bypass 
and reinforce the riser tube with metal angle. The chamber above the firebox was capped off with an inch and a half slab of refractory cement. The damper was added and connected to the stainless steel chimney. The bottom of the oven was formed where the riser tube would meet. Then that too was capped off with a slab of refractory cement insulation added. I then set the cast iron bottom in the oven and started a fire to see if there's any leaks. The top of the smoke channels on the right and floor of the wood storage area was just a layer of fire bricks with a big thick tile set over the top of them. All of the frames for the clean outdoors and the firebox I had to fabricate from scratch. When I had all of them set in, I started placing the stones. In between the fire brick core and the stones, I put a couple layers of ceramic fiber paper to act as an expansion joint. This would allow the fire brick to expand from the high heat and not break. It also provided a little insulation so the higher heat temperatures wouldn't be in direct contact with the stone. The clean outs were all built kind of similar. What I did is I made a plug of that ceramic fiber board, put a little cabinet handle on there, be able to pull them out. That's the two inch ceramic fiber board with a one inch ceramic fiber board over the top of it, and that's just a glass handle for a cabinet. The washer and the screw and then just tighten them all together. And they just fit right in there snug. And then close the door on them. The frame for the firebox door is made of steel square tubing. The bottom of the tubing is open to the passage in the hearth where the fresh air enters. I continued with the stones, added the oven door frame, and some steel framing adjacent to the oven to support more stones. I finished up the stonework, then formed and poured a concrete cap over the wood storage area. I did place some rebar across the span in the wood storage area. This served as a shelf and to help tie in the end stone wall. The top ledge I made with landscape blocks, and so was the shroud I built around the stainless steel chimney. Then all that was left to do was set the hearthstones, and these I just made out of some patio blocks. Although the construction of this fireplace was pretty time consuming and labor intensive, in the end I think it was well worth the effort. It will add a lot of value to the house. And I think it probably even outlasts the house, just the way it's constructed. The total cost was under $3,000 for the materials. That's including the foundation and the chimney all the way out through the roof. So I have found this to be a very rewarding project. Just designing it and the placement of each stone, I think it's probably more like working on a piece of art than making some kind of building structure. And now it will be enjoyed for a long time to come.